So, yeah, my book, Phenomenology of Practice, is meant to uh, help professional practitioners in the uh, helping sciences such as education, nursing, medicine, psychology and so on, to clarify the kinds of issues that they're dealing with in their practices. But it's also, it's also meant to uh, help us reflect on the practices of everyday life. So, um, the bi and so what I'm trying to do in the book is, on the one hand, try to describe the basic idea of phenomenology. And the basic idea really is rather simple. It's reflection on lived experience. So what do we mean by that? Well, maybe I should just quickly explain that right now, <laughs> we're in the moment of the now. And you, while you're watching this, you're in the moment of the now. So we're always in the now. You cannot not be in the now. In that sense, we're always in the now. How can you not be in the now? Except that when you try to capture the now, you're always too late. Inevitably, you're always too late. Whether the now is just a split second ago, or a minute, or an hour, or a year ago, you're always too late in grasping the now. Now, that is the project of phenomenology. It tries to describe the pre-reflectivity of the now. In other words, the lived experience. And that is the basic idea of phenomenology. And then, as well, uh, what I try to do in the book is to show, well, the, the various traditions of phenomenology from all the way from, let's say, Hegel and Nietzsche to the present day phenomenologists such as Marion and Roma, Romano and, and uh, Nancy and so on. So, uh, because basically the way phenomenology is structured, it is a tradition of traditions. And in each tradition, we have some of these great thinkers who, um, in the way that they, that they approach their subjects, are showing us different ways, different methods of exploring, really, the lived meanings of the now. And, 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 and what's so fascinating about that is that they will come up with different insights. And that's really, I think, what ultimately makes phenomenology so interesting. It's a study of lived meaning, of insights into the way we experience life. And so, and so in the book, uh, one other feature of the book, I think uh, you can say, is that I try to describe the three main domains that are the methodological domains of phenomenology. So on the one hand, the philosophical, which is the reduction and the apoche, and there are different kinds of different forms of the reduction. It depends on you know the way that you orient to the past and to the traditions, and so there are different ways of doing phenomenology, different methods. The second uh, domain, methodological domain, you could say, is the linguistic domain. That is the way that we describe, the way that we try to use language, sometimes propositionally, sometimes argumentatively, sometimes poetically, depending on the question that you're asking, depending on what you're interested in. And the third domain is the, the social science methodological domain. And that's really how you would use interviews, observation, writings, uh, and then reflective practices in order to try to come to an understanding of, of themes and of meanings that in, in here, in the lived experiences, in the stories, in the descriptions that you're gaining through interviews and so on. So that's the basic sort of idea of the book.